Good evening and welcome to the program. First, it was a day that was always going to come. It was just a matter of when. Henry Keogh is a free man and tonight we will hear from him for the very first time. Now, it was 20 years ago when he was convicted of the drowning murder of his fiancée, lawyer Anna-Jane Cheney. He was instantly one of the state's most despised men, though he's always protested his innocence. This program took up the case 14 years ago and helped expose the serious cracks in the prosecution's evidence and today attempts to retry him for a third time were withdrawn. Here's Graham Archer. Obviously joy and, and relief, I think relief was the main thing. Um, just not to have to go through another trial and trudge everything back up all over again. So. Yeah, just relief and it's kind of just like, oh, it's over. We've waited for so long, 20 years, for to, to get this news, which should never have happened in the first place. Did you always believe this day would come? Yes, I did. After 20 years, almost to the day, the trials of Henry Keogh are finally over. Relief, gratefulness uh, for those involved that it has come to this. But then I think the lasting impression is one of sadness that this should have been resolved a long time ago, years ago. At 4.30 this afternoon, the DPP Adam Kimber SC, after almost a year of digging his heels in, entered a nolly prosequi. That is the abandonment of the case against Henry Keogh. I understand the public interest in this matter and so I'm prepared to make a brief public statement. The whole time there's delays, there's closed doors, it just feels very political and strategic. It doesn't feel it's ever been about truth or justice or about people's lives. His conviction was quashed by the full court in December last year thanks to all those who made up his elite legal team and many others who have worked tirelessly on the case. It led to his release after almost 20 years behind bars. Now Henry Keogh retains the presumption of innocence. The DPP's reasons for withdrawing the charge is that a key witness had become ill and was not fit to give evidence. This afternoon I discontinued the prosecution uh, of Mr Keogh for the murder of Ms Cheney. I did that because in recent times an essential witness has become unwell and will be unable to give evidence. And as a consequence, I've decided that the matter cannot proceed. That witness is Dr Colin Manock, who, remember, was never professionally qualified to do his job. The man who admitted on oath what he'd seen under the microscope was untrue. The man whose employers had tried to unsuccessfully remove him from his post in the late 70s and then left him there until he disgraced himself over misdiagnosing the deaths of three battered babies. Even then, he was permitted to conduct the autopsy in the Keogh case, while his gross errors and his lies at that inquest were kept secret. This is the man the DPP, even today, claims was crucial to their case. Exactly, and if you can make up one theory that he used in Dad's case on drowning that doesn't actually exist anywhere else in the world. How, who knows how else he's done that in other cases. The impact of this disgraceful episode in our justice system stretches across many decades. Mentally, it has affected the whole family. Henry Keogh Sr. lost a son for two of those decades and much more. I couldn't get a job. My other son couldn't get a job. Michael, he had to go to Melbourne. Because of your name? Yes. So you were denied employment because of the Keogh name? Yes, yes. Alexis lost her father. It's transformed who I am, how I've grown up and what my beliefs are, my values, everything. So it's really shaped me as a person. As did Elise. I was 12 when this all happened. I now have four children, two of them only a few years off of that age. They don't know a life without Grandad being in prison. Um, it's just, it's so far reaching. So should the state make good the damage it's done? Yes, they should, because they're the ones that instigated it. But uh, mentally, uh, mentally they can't 
can never fix it. I mean, I have to try and get back to normal now. Whatever normal is, was, I've forgotten. Viewers of this program will know we have steadfastly argued that this has been a miscarriage of justice for over 14 years. The original prosecution based on a lie. It's ridiculous that someone can be imprisoned for 20 years on evidence that either didn't exist or was misleading. Now, despite him being released from prison almost a year ago, the family has at last had an enormous weight lifted from their shoulders. It goes beyond that to your belief um, in justice and your belief in the government and your belief in a system. And it just raises big question marks about who you can trust and what's real, what's true. Of course, this must not finish here. We shouldn't be able to just put a man in jail for 20 years with fraudulent evidence and then wash our hands of the damage done. There needs to be an inquiry. I just can't imagine them actually doing that because they obviously don't want to. Yes, it would be nice that people that they can learn from this and uh, put things right for a change and do the right thing and not be thinking of, you know, their jobs and their careers and carrying on and cover this body's back and what have you. It would be good to see real justice. We know the current Chief Justice, Chris Caracas, as Solicitor General, commissioned a scientific report in 2004 from Professor Vernon Roberts that made the bombshell finding. My preference as an hypothesis for the sequence of events leading to Miss Cheney's death is that she lost consciousness after having sustained an initial fall in blood pressure due to a blockage of a small artery in her heart or during a faint. While falling backwards from an erect position, she struck her head on the bath before sliding under the water and drowning while unconscious. But that remained behind closed doors for almost a decade. We also know that every pathologist the Crown consulted agreed the death was accidental. None supported Dr Manock. We know too that there was a political campaign to stop this case going back to court. What we need to know is how could this happen and can we stop it from happening again? And remember, there is more than one Henry Keogh. From a personal point of view, it should be to give others hope that are in the same situation. It's got to be about changing the way things are so that those that are languishing can be freed and that those that potentially in the future will be in, in the system, this doesn't happen to them.